Hi, I'm Mrs. Patterson, and I'm going to show you how to hold a violin or viola. It's really important to master these basic setup steps, because if you don't, you may find that no matter how hard you practice at some point later on down the line, you're just not going to be able to keep getting better, um, probably because your technique is getting in the way. So I'm going to show you the setup steps that are going to allow you to play comfortably, easily, and allow you to be successful. But before we get started, I'm going to show you how to put on a sponge or a shoulder rest. Um, if you're using a sponge, you're going to want to put it on with a rubber band. Put, find the corner that's on the same side as your chin rest. Hook the rubber band across over the, uh, sh the chin rest. And if you're using a curvy one like this, you find the flat edge, that's going to go along the instrument. The curvy side is going to go on your shoulder, and we want to put the wide side down the front, okay? So this would be backwards. <laughs> we want that wide side to fill in the gap as the instrument uh, gets tilted towards the front. Okay, so um, it would go like this, and you just slide the sponge under the rubber band and slide it pretty close to the edge. That's going to also help pad that corner to make it a little bit more comfortable. And then when you're done using it for the day, I would recommend just sliding the sponge out and just leaving the, the, the rubber band in place. So all you have to do is slide the sponge on and then slide it off. If you're using a shoulder rest like this, um, which I do recommend, they're a little more expensive, but they do make the instrument usually easier to hold. Um, you're going to look for the curved side and put that side on your shoulder like that. And again, this would be backwards because it's not matching my shoulder curvature. All right, so it goes this way. With the instrument on top, you just hook the feet on the edge and slide the other feet along the bottom until it's pretty much um, across the widest part of the instrument like that. And that's going to make it a lot easier to hold. All right, so let's get ready to hold your instrument. Uh, first of all, I'd like for you to stand up and march in place. You may be thinking, why do we have to stand to play the violin or viola? Uh, you will be sitting later on, but let's just say that there's less to go wrong if you're standing. Okay, we don't want you to, to slouch in your chair and sort of curl, curl around your instrument. Standing is just much better for your posture. Okay, so your feet should be shoulder width apart. Your weight should be equally balanced on both feet. Now with your left hand, Okay, and if I'm facing the same direction as you, it's this side. Okay, with your left hand, put your thumb on that bump that's right there at the top of the instrument. I'm going to call that the thumb bump. That's not its name, just what I call it. Okay, and we're going to wrap your fingers around the top of the strings, and the fingertips are going to um, tap on the far side of the fingerboard like that. Okay, thumb on the thumb bump, fingers around the top. Now just bring the instrument flat against your belly and your arm across the chin rest here. Okay, don't put it ac uh, across the, the bridge. We don't want to put pressure on the strings. We just want to rest your arm right here across the chin rest. And the hand is going to hold the instrument underneath. This is basic rest position. It's a, an easy way to hold your instrument without dropping, which may sound silly, but you, you would not believe how many dropped, broken instruments I've seen over the years. So please treat your instrument carefully. Uh, like the instrument it is and not a toy, okay? Now your thumb is on the thumb bump, fingers around the top. You're going to reach for the ceiling like the Statue of Liberty. With your uh, other finger, find that end button and guide it towards your, your neck as you bring your instrument down on top of your shoulder shelf. Now that's really important and you can see from the back that my shoulder is completely covered, okay? You should not be able to see your shoulder like that. Sometimes I walk around and say, hey, your shoulder is showing, your shoulder so slide showing. your instrument up. Now back to the end button. If your end button is sticking out this way, see how you can see, it? you would be able to see that end button, then that means that you just need to spin your instrument forward, kind of like a, like you're spinning a, a giant pizza, okay, clockwise or to the right, um, so that your instrument should be settled on top of your shoulder at about a 45 degree angle. So not completely forward, not completely to the side, but about a 45 degree angle. 
All right, and you, I've already been doing it, and you may have been doing it already too, but we bring our jaw down into the chin rest. I like to call it the jaw rest because it's not your chin that goes in that thing, it's your jaw. Your jaw is the bone that runs between your ear and your chin, and you want to hook your jaw bone into that chin rest so that the weight of your head is resting on top of the instrument, holding it up, and you should be able to let go with your hand. It looks like magic, doesn't it? But you should be able to let go with your hand so that your head, the weight of your head is holding it. I don't want you to squeeze and I don't want you to lean. I don't want tilted heads so that if you were leaning forward like this and you took the instrument away, this isn't how you would walk around all day, right? Your head would be in a straight line with your spine. So that's really the best way to play the violin as naturally and balanced as you can possibly get it. So you do put a little weight in there, but it shouldn't be twisted or turned one way or the other. Okay, so let's go back to rest position. Let's practice those setup steps. So your thumb is on the thumb butt, fingers around the top, Statue of Liberty. Find your end button and guide it towards your neck as you bring it down on top of your shoulder shelf. And you rest the weight of your head into the instrument. Now you can just sit there and get comfortable for a minute. If that's not comfortable for you, I would like to point out that the chin rest is not permanently attached to your instrument. That can be removed. These uh, these are actually double-ended screws. You get a little special tool and you can and just pop that off and replace it with a different one that might be more comfortable for you. You know, if you can make a $20 investment into something that's going to make you more comfortable and allow you to hold the instrument correctly, I think it's worth it. Okay, so we might uh, keep that in mind. Now, if it's not comfortable, if yours is not comfortable, something you might try doing is matching that uh, the curve of your chin rest to your jaw without touching your shoulder and then bringing it down, okay, rather than finding it the other way around, okay. So you might want to um, match it sort of to your cheek and then bring the instrument down. That might be a more comfortable way for you to find just exactly where your jaw should go in the chin rest. If this edge right here is bothering you, you can get a, um, a towel or a cloth to put across that. Sometimes I know students get a little uh, sore right there. You might also want to sort of play around with the angle where you're holding it. Just tiny little differences can make a big difference. Um, I don't like the kinds of pads that go all the way, uh, the way around the end of the instrument. I think it's too bulky and it really you really should just get used to um, to holding the um, the instrument pretty much as is. Um, a little thin cloth or something might help for the meantime, but do, do try to get used to holding it um, without too much added padding. Okay, now you can go back to rest position if you want. I'm going to talk about why these things are so important. Now you notice that from the very beginning, having your hand right here, your wrist is straight. That's really important because one of the things almost all beginning uh, violin and viola students do is they grab the neck like this, and they go to playing position, and then the wrist is bent, and that's a really, really bad habit and a very difficult one to break. So I don't want you to even one moment have your hand uh, with your wrist collapsed, okay? So even from the very beginning, your wrist is straight, your fingers are curved, okay? And then we did Statue of Liberty and we turned and brought it down. That's really important also because if you were to just go from rest position and say put your instrument up, well probably we'd see this with your instrument pointing at the ground. And if you try to do that, then your bow is just going to slide down the sliding board and also your wrist is going to collapse. Okay, so again it's really important that your uh, instrument be level with the ground. Um, also, <laughs> notice that there's space under here. There's space between your elbow and your side. Okay, they should not be connected like that. Please do not try to, I've even seen students try to <laughs> brace their elbow by, by twisting their back. That's a really bad habit too. So just get used to having a little space in there. Um, you might picture having a, a balloon under there or a pillow or to say, oh, it's a really warm day. <laughs> Keep that space open. Okay, so there's space in between there. All right, we're also looking again for your head head, the weight of your head in the jaw rest or the chin rest. So that is what's holding your instrument, not your hand. Eventually your hand is going to need to be shifting and doing vibrato and other advanced techniques. So you cannot uh, count on holding your instrument completely with the left hand. Okay. Um, also we're looking for that straight line from your elbow up your wrist to the back of the hand and um, that will be how you play no matter what position you're in. We don't ever cave in like that. Okay. So now you know how to do it correctly and um, you can keep practicing. Good luck.